Now, in looking at this, the original color of that logo looked OK with the image when it was blue. Notice how the image has kind of a cool sort of tone to it. Um, and this blue kind of goes with that cool sort of tone. Now that we've made it their new pink color, it's seeming to me that the image feels a little bit too cool. What could we do to warm up this image? Well, we don't want to use this layer here because it was making the whole thing too pink. There's fluff on the screen. That's weird. Um, yeah, that's manual Photoshop. Um, so I clipped it to this layer here. I'm going to use an adjustment layer on this one. I'm going to make an adjustment layer, and I'm going to give it, uh, I'll just do levels. So there's a levels adjustment. And maybe I want to give it some warmth. So what colors do we think of when we think of warm tones? Yeah, red, yellow, orange. So what channel would I go to to give it a yellowish cast? Go to the blue channel, because blue is the opposite of yellow. Um, so I'm going to pop into the blue here. And if I grab the middle slider, I can add blue, or I can subtract blue. Now, I'm noticing I've pulled this to the right a bit, and it has added yellow to the image, but it's mostly affecting kind of the mid-tones, which I guess makes sense, because I grabbed the middle slider and I pulled to the right here. But the highlights are looking still just as cool. If you get the white balance wrong on an image, like let's say I was um, photographing outdoors and someone was holding up a white sheet of paper or a gray card, and I had my white balance set to daylight, and I'm photographing under daylight. The gray card would look gray, the white paper would look white. And then I headed indoors, and I took some photographs of the exact same gray card and the exact same sheet of paper under tungsten lights. What sort of color would that white look? Warmish, yellowish tone. If it's a lower watt, even kind of an orangey sort of color. It's kind of exactly what we were just saying we wanted, an orangey, yellowish, red and yellow together, you get an orange. But these whites are staying the same. How could I affect only the whites, uh, and to, to a lesser degree, the mid-tones? This is the mid-tone here. On the right side, this is our whites. This would clip the blue channel. This would add to the top end of blue. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put that middle slider back to where it was, back to that 1.0. And I'm going to grab the output slider. Again, this one would just clip the highlights and basically put a blue cast into the highlights. But this one would put a little flat spot on the end. It would give some warmth to those highlights. And it wouldn't affect the midtones as much. Essentially, we've got a histogram that kind of would now look like there's a flat spot at the end here. In fact, if I throw another levels on, you can see what's happened on that blue channel. On this adjustment layer down here, I took this white point and I pulled it down, which is kind of the same thing as taking this white point and pulling it up, adding a little gap onto the end. And then just so I can show you that, I threw a second levels here, which is seeing the effect of this adjustment layer here. So we have that little flat spot, and we have this yellowish cast picking up in the highlights. Now something interesting has also happened to this histogram. It's gotten like hair or something. What's going on there? Anybody know? Remember I talked about, think of those shades of gray from you know black to white, from 0 to 255, as a bunch of beads on an elastic string. We have a black bead down here at 0, a white bead up here at 255, and we grab the middle bead and we pull it left and right. And I said, what would happen to the beads on this side of the string? You pull it over here, you've got less space, some of the beads pop off the string. And each bead is a shade of gray, and each pixel had a shade of gray assigned to it. And if that shade of gray pops off the string, the pixels that were represented by that shade of gray are like, I've lost my shade of gray. And they'll have to pick one of the ones on either side. Usually they'll go to this one over here, and suddenly there'll be twice as many pixels for that shade of gray. And you'll get a little spike happening in the histogram. And what we did for here, we basically said, well, let's take our white point and pull it down the string a little bit, put a little flat spot on the end of a string. Well, let's say we pulled it 20 points down, there's 20 less spaces on the string. And bing, 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 20 little beads had to pop off the string. And for every pixel that said, oh, I've lost my shade of gray, they have to move to one to the side. And that's where these little spikes are coming from. In fact, if you counted the spikes, you could probably work out exactly how far down we pulled that one there. So is it damaging? <sighs> yes, in the sense that we don't have 256 shades of gray uh, left in the blue channel for this image. But is it better than it was? I'd say it's more towards what we were aiming for. And by using this adjustment layer, 
we've kept it as non-destructive as we could make it. If we wanted to play around with it afterwards, we could go back to that layer and we could nudge that around. It's not actually making a permanent change. So I think we'll let it slide. Now we also, we said like, you know, yellows and reds and oranges. What could get us some reds into the highlights? Well, the opposite is cyan. So if we pushed some reds into the highlights, let's see what that does. Let me just get rid of this in here. If we go back into here, we go into the red, pull this down. Nope, that's put, the opposite of red is cyan. Wait, what if we go to green and we pull this down? What color is that putting into the highlights? Magenta. Now, it's looking kind of like a, a reddish, orangish sort of cast. It's not looking like a magenta cast. Well, remember we pulled the blue down, which put some yellow into the highlights. And remember with RGB, the opposite was CMY, and when you combined yellow and magenta light, what color did you end up with? You got red. So by putting some yellow into the highlights and then a little bit of magenta into the highlights, we're getting that yellowish, reddish cast happening that we were talking about. And those tones are looking a bit warmer. Let's look at the before and after. Here's before, cooler highlights. There's after. That seems to match up with kind of the feel of that warm tone in there. So I think that would be a little bit better as, a, as an ad. Now I'm also noticing that this is kind of getting lost in the, um, the background about up here. Do you guys know about layer styles? Let's just quickly take a look at that because I think this needs some separation from the background. I'm gonna select the logo layer here. That's that guy up there. And at the bottom of the layers panel, you'll see a little FX icon. That's where you access your layer styles. They are not called layer effects, they're called layer styles, but I guess it was too much to put in there, so they just put FX. But if you click on that, you'll see a pop-up. And these are all the different um, layer styles that you can apply to individual layers. And I'm thinking maybe a drop shadow. What's a drop shadow? Anybody know? Before we had the uh, layer effects, you would actually make a duplicate of the layer, you would use the levels to make the whole thing completely black, you would blur it with a Gaussian blur, and you would offset it. This basically just automates the process. So if you go to drop shadow, and this can often help like a, a logo or you know any kind of element that you're adding in to kind of stand out from the background a bit there. And let me just quickly talk about the settings in here. This is kind of simulating a light source. Like this shadow right now kind of looks like the light is up here coming down from this direction. And oh, look at the angle. It's up here coming down from this direction. If you want to play around with the angle, uh, there's a couple things you could do. You could grab this little dial, swing it around. You could type a different number into here, or you could click on the image and drag that shadow around. Now dragging the shadow around here will actually change two settings up here. It'll change the angle and the distance. The distance is basically how far offset from the object that shadow is going to go. So again, I can change the angle using the little rotation thing up here. I can change the distance using the slider over here. Or I can simply click on the image and I can drag that shadow around. And you can see that angle and distance changing in real time. And you'd probably try to choose something that kind of matches the lighting in the image. Now the amount of fuzziness or softness in the shadow uh, is controlled by the size and the spread. Size is basically how much of a Gaussian blur has been applied to it. Let me just bring that opacity up a little bit. There, you can see that shadow there. With a small size, if I take the size right down, it's basically a hard-edged duplicate of the layer. As I bring the size up, it gets a little bit softer and a little bit fuzzier. And it could get to the point where, like the fine lettering down below where it says your tagline, um, it just fuzzes out to nothingness. You can pull up the spread, but be careful of it. Just a little bit, it starts to make that shadow a little bit more intense. If you take it too far, it just kind of becomes like a, a bloated, yeah, bulb around the outside of it. Um, so if you want to get a little more darkness in, just a little bit of spread in there, play around with the size until it just looks like a little shadow kind of falling off to the side there. When you hit OK, there she, OK, that's a bit too dark. You can always um, play around with the effects by double clicking on the layer here. You'll notice we actually end up with two little effects things in here. We have an effects eyeball and a drop shadow eyeball. If I had more effects on this, like say three or four of them, I would see them all under the drop shadow here and I could use the eyeball to turn them off individually. If I wanted to turn off all the effects, I can just turn off the eyeball on effects. And if I want to change one, I can just double click on the name of the effect. And I'm going to pull that opacity down a little. There, that looks better. 